Church, we're so glad that you've decided to join us this morning. If this is your first time or your hundredth time, welcome to Epicenter Church. Let's worship God. Sing the weapon. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh my God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord And I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle
over your people this morning with victory and with peace. We praise your name, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. Jesus, we worship your name this morning. God, I pray that you would bring your peace over your people this morning, no matter where they're watching from. We don't have to be in the same building to worship the same God. So Lord, we worship you this morning. We set aside time to worship your name this morning. See what you can do, oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. Cause there's no prison wall that you can break through. Cause there's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all oh, things are possible. The darkest night.
Yes, Lord. God, we thank You that You are the God of revival. We thank You that You have come to set us free, that no chain can hold us, no bondage can hold us. Lord, You have come to set us free. We thank You, God. We praise Your Name. Amen. Thank You so much for joining us in worship this morning. It's been awesome to be able to worship with You. I um, I pray that you found some peace and some hope throughout that time. So uh, tithes and offering this week, uh, the the details will be on the screen. So whenever you're ready, feel free to do that. And can we just say thank you so much for your generosity. It has been awesome to see um, the incredible generosity of our church. So thank you. Uh, Next week, we have a very exciting new sermon series starting. I'm very excited about it. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go straight to a video that will tell you all about it. It's called It's Your Move. Every day we make choices. Every day, we get the opportunity to choose. Choose to hit snooze or get up early. Choose to spend money or save it. We make the choice about what to wear, what to eat, what to watch, and how we spend our time. To choose community with people or walk away from it. The choices we make will either drag us backwards, keep us stagnant, or move us forward. Every day, it's your choice. You get to choose your move. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Epicenter Church online. If you're watching from home, we pray that you'll uh, enjoy the service and have enjoyed the worship. Uh, It's great to have you along with us this morning. My name's Noel Portwine, and I'm one of the pastors here at Epicenter, and I'll be leading us around the Word this morning. Also, we uh, enjoy your feedback. If you've got any feedback at all uh, in regard to the service, we want your comments. We want you to have a say in the service today and uh, all the services for that matter so that we can uh, uh, relay those things on to pastors in the church who will get back to you. And if you need prayer or anything else, uh, we're here to help. Today, I want to look at an event that took place just prior to Jesus' arrest prior to his death and prior to his resurrection. It's called the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just to set the scene, I want to read Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised the third day. Then Matthew 16, 24, 7, as we go on with this reading. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Jesus here was talking about his second coming. When he comes again, when he comes at the second coming, he he will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Then Jesus makes a statement which is one of the trickiest verses in the Bible until we open it up this morning and we look at look at it. Assuredly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Then he said, And after six days Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him, talking to Jesus. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make there three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, arise and do not be afraid. 
When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell this vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Then why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you, Elijah has come already. And they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is about to suffer at their hands. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your word today. And Lord, as we just open up the scripture, I pray, dear God, that you speak to all of our hearts, that we'd have a fresh revelation, Lord, of who you are. We'd have a revelation of you as the Son of God, God in the flesh, the one who has came to save us, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, be glorified through this message, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In Mark's account of the transfiguration in chapter 9, verse 1, Jesus began by saying that some of his disciples would not taste death until they saw the kingdom of God present in power. Jesus was referring to Peter, James and John. Six days later on the Mount of Transfiguration, they would be privileged to witness, have a preview of Christ in his present glorified state. When you think about Jesus Christ, we, we remember him at Christmas as the baby in the manger. When we look at Calvary, we remember him the, as the suffering lamb of God and nailed to a cross for our sins. But when he comes back in all his glory, he will see him as they saw him on that mountain of transfiguration. In Matthew 17 too, Jesus transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. A dazzling white, a visible manifestation of his deity, his holiness, his righteousness and power. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we put our faith in. This is the God who raised the dead. This is the God who healed the sick. This is the God that came to earth to save you and me. Transfiguration is a supernatural change in appearance and form into a more beautiful and spiritual state. In, John 1, in 1 John 1, 5, it says that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all and Jesus Christ he radiates that light. While Jesus was here on earth, his glory was veiled in his body of flesh. He was here in humiliation, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. But during the thousand year millennium reign, his glory will be revealed to all. And all will see him in all his splendour, majesty, glory, power as he is right now. What a day that will be. He will no longer appear as a baby in a manger, but as the lion, as the tribe of the tribe of Judah. And all who see him will recognise him, Jesus, Saviour, God the Son, whose name is above every other name, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, Emmanuel, God with us, the Righteous One. The transfiguration of Jesus Christ was just a preview of his present glorified state. These three disciples who were close to Jesus would never forget what they saw and what they heard and what they witnessed on that mount of transfiguration. We just want to look at Peter now and what Peter said about this event. In Peter chapter 2, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 18, it says this, For we did not follow cunning devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were eyewitnesses. They saw him. They saw God in the flesh. They saw him manifest before their very eyes. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honour and glory when 
Such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We heard his, this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on that mountain, on that holy mountain. We were there with him. We heard the voice of the father. We saw him with our own eyes on that mountain. Peter shares this account with us in detail. And after hearing the shocking news of the suffering of Jesus' death that he faced, Jesus gives the Peter, James and John something to hang on to before he went to Jerusalem to be arrested, then uh, uh, flogged and beaten and nailed to a cross for our sins. The reassurance that they needed, seeing him in his future glorified state. Up until now, his glory was veiled in a body of flesh. Through their eyes, we also have a preview, a picture of what Jesus will be like when we see him face to face. This is what we saw then gives three proofs or testimonies of the transfiguration. The testimony of sight, the testimony of hearing and the testimony of physical presence. Regarding sight, these three disciples saw the transfigured Christ. When they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus. Peter declares, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, the glory of his coming in power. We had a glimpse of the glorified Christ. The testimony of hearing, Peter emphasises, and we heard this voice which came from heaven when they were with the Lord on the holy mountain, the voice of the Father. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Peter adds the testimony of physical appearance. We were with him on the holy mountain. We were with him on that mountain when he transfigured before us. We were there with him on that mountain. How privileged they were to see the Son of God manifest before them into his deity and they were on that mountain with him. In Luke's gospel, they, we have a different preview, but a, a far better uh, illustration of what actually happened on that mountain as well. In Luke chapter 9, verse 29 to 31, as he prayed, his appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistering. And behold, two men were with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his demise, sorry, his decease, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. That is an amazing thing. Moses and Elijah were there on the mount with Jesus. They appeared on the mount with Jesus, talking about his coming death, talking about his coming arrest in Jerusalem, coming about his death upon the cross. We need to note that Moses died and the Lord buried Moses in his, in his, his earthly body in the desert of Moab in Deuteronomy 34.5. It's worth noting that Deuteronomy was written 1,405 years BC before Christ. Yet here is Moses with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Friends, he is the resurrection and the life. If we're in him, he, we have, will not experience death. We will pass from death into life in heaven with him. Are you in him this morning? Do you know him as your Lord and Saviour? Jesus is the Lord of your life. In 2 Kings chapter 2, 11 to 12, Elijah went to heaven in a whirlwind. That was 560 years BC. Peter was deeply moved by the occasion. He says, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And it was. But then rashly suggests erecting three tabernacles. One for you, Lord, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Peter didn't realise what he was saying. Jesus is not one among equals, but Lord of all. 
He is above all. He is preeminent. He is supreme. He is outstanding in glory and majesty, power, dominion and authority. He is God, the Son. While Peter spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear Him. Listen to Him. It's a word for us this morning. Hear Jesus, not the voices of others. Not Peter's suggestions, but Christ's word, then and now, is our final authority. We need to listen to Him. In 2 Peter 1.17, Peter calls this cloud the excellent glory in which God spoke from heaven. Stunned by that glory cloud, the disciples fell on their faces, greatly afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. You know, throughout Scripture, there's many Scriptures that says, Do not be afraid. Do not fear. I've redeemed you. Do not be frightened. Do not fear, for I am with you. The word for us today is fear not. Even through this situation we're walking through, even through a bad uh, health report, do not fear. Because what we fear, we empower. We need to invite Jesus into the storm that may be happening in your life this morning or in other people's lives. We need to invite Jesus into the storm. In John chapter 14, 27, Jesus said this, Peace, I leave it with you. Wherever you are this morning, whether you're watching this online, wherever you are, Jesus said, my peace, I leave it with you. That's a promise. That's a promise to you this morning. You need to proclaim it. I thank you, Lord, for your peace. I thank you for your peace, Lord. I proclaim it over my life. And then he said, my peace, I give it to you. That's a gift. We need to receive it. Lord, I receive your peace. Say it to him, Lord, I receive your peace this morning. And then he says, not as the world gives do I give unto you. Then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. As I said before, what we fear, we empower. If we think about uh, the story of uh, Israel uh, and, and Goliath, Goliath roared every morning and he roared every night and they ran. They were full of fear. And the more they ran, the louder he roared. And at night time in particular, things can come into our minds. We can fear this. We can be anxious about that. But we need to activate Jesus Christ into the storm. We need to invite him into that storm. With Lord Jesus, I'm fearful. I'm anxious about this. I ask you to come. I pray for your peace, not the peace that the world gives. I receive your peace this morning. I receive your peace in that dark hour of the night. This preview was, was a preview of the Lord Jesus will be like when he comes in his glory to set up his kingdom. As they arose, they saw no one but Jesus. That's a word for us all today. They saw no one but Jesus. In the last days, there'll be many that try to distract us from seeing Jesus Christ only. Multi-faith, humanistic teaching, Jesus said this, and he said it to Thomas, uh, the doubter. They, Thomas was one of Jesus' disciples. He was the one that said, I will not believe that he's risen from the dead unless I can put my hand in his side and see him myself. And he was a great uh, disciple, but he was known, Doubting Thomas was his name. And, Jesus, and he was asking Jesus, how do we go where you're going? How do we get to heaven? How do we go to be where you are? And Jesus just said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, Thomas. He said, how do I get there? I don't know. And Jesus had told him many, many times how he could get to heaven. And then Jesus said this, I am the way. There's no other way, Thomas. I am the truth. I am the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through me. Friends, there's no other way to heaven. There's no other way to be saved but through Jesus Christ, who is Saviour, who is Lord, and we need to receive him. They saw no one but Jesus. Moses and Elijah had disappeared. Symbolically, Moses represented the Old Testament covenant that was replaced by the new covenant 
through the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you and me upon Calvary. Elijah represented the prophets. The Bible says the prophecy will cease at Jesus' second coming. Peter, James and John represented New Testament believers, those of us who have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. They represent us, you and me, converts of faith in Jesus, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They saw no one but Jesus. Those who had received him. Do you know him this morning as your personal Lord and Saviour? Jesus alone was standing there. It is a picture of his unique, glorious and self-preeminent place as Saviour and Lord of all. Whatever needs you had this morning, whatever situation you may be going through, Jesus stands alone in power to heal, to deliver, to forgive, to save, to help us in our hour of need, to transform our lives through his grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, though we all have fallen, he stands. He reaches down his hand of grace to lift us up. He stands alone as Saviour. His name stands alone as above all other names. His word stands alone as faithful and true. He stands alone, as I've said before, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It's all about God's love for fallen humanity. Jesus went to that cross loving you. Jesus went to that cross loving you. Don't tell me that nobody loves you. He loved you enough to die for your sins. He loved you enough to bear the penalty for your sins and my sin upon himself. In John 3, 16, 17, which is a well-known scripture, and may I encourage you, if you're out there this morning, you can put your own name in this verse. For God so loved the world, for God so loved Noel, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him, Jesus, might be saved, that you might be saved. Beautiful. He never sent His Son to judge us or condemn us. He sent Him to save. For unto us a Son is given, a Saviour is born to save mankind from their sinful state. There's only one Saviour and His name is Jesus Christ. May I encourage you this morning, regardless of the things you may be facing or maybe the fears or even anxiety that you may be bearing, Jesus wants to help. He wants to fight your battles. But we need to bring him in to the storm. We need to bring him in to our lives. This morning, I would love to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your own personal Lord and Saviour. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's a promise. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you're home this morning, as I said before, please comment. We're interested in your comments and your feedback. It's all a little bit different to us, uh, uh, preaching online, but please comment. Uh, Get back to us so the pastors can help meet your needs, can contact you, can follow you up, can pray for you. Whatever you require, we're here to help. I'm going to lead us in a prayer and it's going to be a twofold prayer. The first part's going to be a prayer of salvation. And if you'd like to receive Jesus as Lord and Saviour, it's very simple. He reaches out to you. And if you want to receive Him this morning, just follow me in this prayer. After that, I'm going to ask anyone at home that's struggling with anything to reach out your hand, not to me, but to Him, to Jesus. And we're going to pray God's peace upon you and God's touch upon you as you're sitting in your home today. So let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for each person. Lord, those at home that would like to receive you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, I confess to follow me in this prayer. I'm sorry. Lord, I confess 
that I'm a sinner. Lord, I cannot save myself. I thank you, Lord, that you came to earth to save me, to redeem me with your own blood upon the cross. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I receive you, Lord, as my Lord and Saviour. I ask you to come into my life, into my heart. Lord, I commit my life to you. And I ask you, Lord, to be Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that the angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner who comes home. And your name is now written, the Bible says, in the Lamb's Book of Life. What a wonderful promise that is. May I encourage you to get involved when we get back to church and family church and, and what, keep watching online and begin to read your Bible and begin to know this Jesus that you've just invited into your heart. And John's gospel is a great gospel to start at. Please reach out your hands. and I want to pray for those that are struggling this morning. Lord, I pray for anyone who's fearful, anyone who's struggling, anyone who is, is battling in their situation. I pray, Lord, as your promise, your peace upon them. Lord, not the peace that the world gives, but your peace. Let it rest upon their shoulders. May you touch their hearts, take away anxiety and fear and heaviness and loneliness and minister to their needs. I pray for the sick this morning, Lord, that you would touch them, that you would heal them right where they are. The touch of the Master's hand. He touched them and made them whole. May they receive a touch from you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's been great being with you this morning. We wish you a happy week and a, 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 and a, a splendid afternoon. And God bless you all. And do tune in again next week as we have the Word and the worship again here at Epicenter. God bless you all. Good night.